Hello class, this is Demetrius Wilson again with Managerial Accounting. We're on our third lecture, third chapter. Uh, the class is moving by uh, rather quickly as, as, I, as I knew that it would. So uh, we'll go through this chapter uh, just like we do the others and go over the topics. A lot more slides in this one, so we'll probably end up having about uh, three, um, uh, three parts. So this will be part one, probably have part two, and it may be a part three as well. Just depends on how quickly I get through this. All right. <clears throat> so let's start. So chapter three, how does an organization use activity-based costing to allocate overhead costs? So there are various ways to allocate overhead costs, and activity-based based costing is one that, that companies are very fond of because they can recognize uh, operational inefficiencies and see what departments and parts of their organization are doing well. So understand why organizations allocate overhead costs to products. So why do managers insist on allocating overhead costs to various products? Job costs typically include direct materials, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead, something that we've gone, to, gone over in the last two chapters. Uh, indirect manufacturing costs or overhead are not easily traced to products, so these must be allocated to the actual products. So what's the benefits of allocating overhead costs to these products? To provide information for decision making, such as establishing prices. I need to know how much I spend as a company in order to make my product in order to establish how much I'm going to sell it for because I need to know how much money I want to in turn bring into the company through revenue. We want to promote efficient uses of resources and to comply with United States generally accepted accounting principles uh, which requires all manufacturing costs to be assigned to products for inventory costing. So we're going to compare and contrast allocating overhead costs used by a plant or using a plant-wide rate, department rates, and activity-based costing. So when you talk about a plant-wide rate, that means everything within the plant has one uh, one base of of overhead. It it doesn't vary from department to department. Everywhere in the company says every hour we're there, it's thirty dollars worth of overhead. So what are the three methods that can be used to allocate overhead costs? Plant-wide allocation, which we'll go over first. Department allocation, obviously that means that you know you have the claims department, customer service department, uh, and um, uh, research department. These three departments are all going to have a uh, different uh, overhead. An activity-based allocation uh, called activity-based costing, and that's going to say, okay, uh, I'm mopping the floor, and this is how much overhead is applied to that, and you're using a machine, and this is how much over overhead is applied to that, and, and we'll get into that in, in, in great detail. So how is the plant-wide method used to allocate overhead costs to products? So one predetermined overhead rate is used for the entire company, as I mentioned before. So the entire company has this one overhead rate. A predetermined overhead rate calculation, uh, which is from uh, Chapter 2, is estimated overhead cost divided by estimated activity and allocation base. And remember, the allocation base is either going to be uh, uh, hours worked or money spent on direct labor or machine hours, something of that nature. It uh, works well for companies with simple operations and uh, a few similar products. So if all your products are pretty much similar along the same lines, then you don't really need to uh, have a lot of, of variance in regards, to, uh, in regards to the overhead. But if you have a lot of different departments, a lot of different uh, uh, products, then, then you may. So this is a really good example. So it's a sell right example of plant-wide predetermined overhead rate. So you see overhead rate applied to, uh, to the basic sailboat and overhead uh, applied to the, the, to the deluxe sailboat. Now the deluxe sailboat is a more expensive sailboat than the, uh, than the basic uh, sailboat as you can tell by the title. But they're still saying that it's on one, only one overhead rate for if you're going to make a, a basic sailboat or if you're going to make a deluxe sailboat and you see that uh, the they estimate that their overhead cost will be eight million dollars during the year divided by two hundred fifty thousand uh, direct labor hours is thirty two dollars per direct labor hour that's going to be the overhead rate so using one plant light rate uh, to allocate sell rights company overhead so how's the product cost per unit determined at sale right using the plant-wide approach? Direct materials and direct labor costs per unit are the same regardless of the method used to allocate overhead, right? So that's going to remain the same. It's going to remain constant. Both costs are given for this example. 
So check it out. So overhead cost per unit is calculated as direct labor hours at, per unit times $32 overhead rate per direct labor hour. So you see over in uh, the basic sailboat cost per unit. Direct materials is 1000 For the deluxe sailboat, because it's a better sailboat, it's 1300 Direct labor is 600 for the basic sailboat. And 750 takes a little bit more of a skilled individual probably for the deluxe sailboat. And then the overhead for the basic sailboat is 1280 and a 1600 for the deluxe sailboat. Uh, where do you get those numbers from? If you look down here in the legend, you see that uh, you have 40 hours that's applied to the basic sailboat. So 40 times that 32 is 1280. And for the deluxe sailboat, you have 50 direct labor hours. And, and why would it take longer? Uh, it, it would take longer because it's a, a bigger, better sailboat. So uh, $50 times that 32 is 1600. And there you have your numbers, you add them all up, and you have your total product cost per unit, 2880 for the basic sailboat and 3650 for the deluxe sailboat. Now, what may pop up in your head is, well, these, these two boats don't cost the same, so how can you have one predetermined overhead rate? And those are some of the questions that are good for, for to pop up in your head because as we go further towards activity-based costing and, and look further in detail, you'll you'll see why some people don't want to have uh, a plant-wide uh, overhead rate. So how's the department method used to allocate overhead cost to products? So one predetermined overhead rate is used for each department. Predetermined overhead rate calculation for each department is estimated department overhead cost, right? It's not the whole company, it's just the department. So the departmental cost divided by estimated activity and allocation base, which we've already discussed. Different allocation base can be used for each department, right? So if my department is very uh, direct labor uh, hours intensive and your department is very machine hours intensive, we'll use whichever one is better for our department. Uh, works well for companies with simple operations within each department, but different activities across, across departments. So it split three different departments, three different activities. This will work well for them. So notice in the cell right example below or to the left, to the right uh, that each department uses a different allocation base, machine hours and direct labor hours. The goal is to use the allocation base that best drives overhead costs for each department. That's the cost driver, which we'll talk about in the next few slides. Uh, so using department rates to allocate sale right companies overhead, if you look over this and you see the department, the whole fabrication department, we're going to say that they're going to uh, estimate uh, $3 million in regards to overhead divided by the 60,000 uh, uh, machine hours. So it's $50 per machine hour. And then on the assembly department, think about it, assembly has to do with people because they're going to assemble things. And the cost is, uh, or estimated cost is $5 million of overhead divided by 217,000 direct labor hours. So it's $23 per direct labor hour. So not only is the cost different, but uh, the allocation base is different between the departments. Uh, so you see they have down there, just so you know, MH is machine hours and DLH uh, is direct labor hours. So understand how to use the five steps of activity-based costing to determine products. So how is activity-based costing, or ABC as you'll see called, see it called places, uh, used to allocate overhead costs to products? So activity-based costing uses several cost pools organized by activity to allocate overhead costs. Examples of activities are purchasing materials, right? How, what does it take to purchase those materials? Setting up machines, what does it take to do that? And assembling products, what, what, is, uh, what entails uh, ass assembling the actual products that you're going to sell? Uh, overhead costs are allocated to products based on each product's use of the activities. So what are the five steps uh, required to implement activity-based costing? So number one, identify costly activities required to produce products. Those are your cost drivers. You have to figure out what's driving those costs. Well, if I'm 100% assembly, I know what's driving the cost. It's how much money I have to pay the, uh, the individuals to assemble the products. Uh, the goal is to understand all activities required to make the company's product. So you must narrow down the activities to those that significantly impact uh, overhead costs, right? So if it doesn't have a big impact, that's not what we're looking for. So Sailrite identified the following activities, right? They make sailboats. Purchasing materials, right? You got to get your wood, your sails, all that good stuff. Uh, setting up the machines, uh, running the machines, assembling products, and expecting finished products. So these are, these are the, the uh, activities that are very closely associated and, and, and close to 
to the uh, the cost of um, <clears throat> of within the various departments and for activity based costing. So you assign overhead costs to activities identified in step one. It requires identifying the overhead costs associated with each activity, and Sellright uh, identified the following costs in this manner. So purchasing materials, you see that they have uh, one million two hundred thousand uh, dollars associated with purchasing uh, materials. Setting up machines, one million uh, six hundred thousand. Uh, running the machines, two million seven hundred thousand. So you already see you can you can see by looking at the diagram uh, or the by looking at the picture that uh, setting up those machines, uh, I'm sorry, running the machines is is what it really is is driving up the cost. Uh, assembling products is one million five hundred, and inspecting those finished products is uh, one million dollars. And we'll speak a little bit later about why inspecting those products is so important. And the total is eight million dollars in total, but we have it split up by different departments. So step three is to identify the cost driver for each activity. So you have to actually list what the cost driver will be. So the cost driver is the action that causes or drives the cost associated with the activity. The example is the cost of setting up a machine is caused by a number of times the machine must be set up. How many different times do we have to set up the machine? The more machine setups, the higher the cost, right? The more labors worked, the more that you have to pay out for the individuals who are actually completing the labor. So Sellright established the following cost drivers for each activity. So for purchasing materials, it's the number of purchase requisitions, right? How many purchase requisitions did you fill out? Uh, setting up machines, uh, number of machine setups. Uh, running machines, number of machine hours. Assembling products as a number of direct labor hours. And inspecting finished products, a uh, number of inspection hours. So you want to calculate a predetermined overhead rate for each activity. Uh, predetermined overhead uh, calculation for each activity is estimated uh, activity overhead cost, right? So that still remains the same, and estimated activity and allocation base. So Sellright established the following predetermined overhead rates. So if you look, you, you'll see that uh, you have the cost driver right here, right? So we'll, I'm sorry, you start with the activity. So here's the activity, purchasing materials. What's the cost driver? Purchasing requisitions. What's the estimated cost? One million two hundred thousand. How many uh, estimated cost uh, drive or the estimated cost driver activity, right? So you said purchasing materials and purchase requisition is the cost driver. So you have ten thousand times that they uh, submitted a purchase requisition. So you divide one million two hundred thousand by ten thousand, and you get hundred and twenty dollars per requisition. So same thing with the setting up of machines. So machine setups, it's going to cost one million six hundred thousand. Uh, their estimated cost driver activity is going to happen two thousand times and that's going to cost them eight hundred dollars per setup and the same holds true for running machines assembling products and inspecting the finished uh, products right so you should be able to you know go across do the math this number divided by this number is that number right there and allocate overhead cost of products so you multiply the predetermined overhead rate for each activity by the level of cost driver activity used for each product and here's how it looks. So Sellright allocated overhead costs for each activity as follows. Uh, the cost dr driver activity levels were given. Notice that the per unit overhead cost uh, is, is calculated at the bottom. All right, And I'll, I'll show you how to get to that. So you see that uh, cost driver activity for the basic sailboat is right here and the over overhead allocated and then also for the deluxe sailboat is right there and right there right so uh, so you see if you take that 120 uh, per requisition and this is how many uh, would have taken place for basic and this is how many would have taken place for the deluxe sailboat right so you take that you multiply that number so you take like say for instance the 50 times the 12,000 so $50 per inspection hour times 12,000 is 600,000 now you add up all of your overhead allocated for both sides and you come up with the number right so that 5 million 20,000 and that 2 million 980,000 if you combine or add those two numbers you're going to get eight million right uh, and then down here uh, you'll see that uh, that you have your your numbers of, of 1,004 so that's the overhead cost per unit for each product so 
What's the overhead for each product? It's going to be a thousand four for a basic sailboat and two thousand nine eighty for a deluxe sailboat, right? And uh, you know why uh, or or how do you come up with that? Uh, you go by uh, how many units are produced, and it shows down there in in the legend. You see that you have a uh, five thousand units versus uh, one thousand units produced. Uh, so uh, so when you combine those two numbers together, you you get the eight million. Uh, so what what I would want you guys to do. On